Charlie Haas, who's back on in the wrestling mix, uh, and he just announced his House of Pain tour. Charlie, thanks for joining me today, man. No, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me, man, and uh, I'm looking forward to this. So thank you very much, man. Yeah, really, absolutely. This is really good fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think I first saw you very back in September, I think, of 2000. You wrestled. You were at. The, you were on dark match on Raw with your brother Tag, and I was right. against K Quick and maybe Road Dog, but I can't remember who you fought exactly. But it, it, it may have been K Quick and Road Dog, and I think I think it was, uh, and it was a dark, and I think it was with, um, yeah, because they were doing they were getting ready to do a tag team, I think. Yes. At the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, th- that's the first time I got sight of you, and then I remember I always remembered your name after that, and then when I saw you in the mix of all that stuff. And I went yeah. to college. I went to college at Clare University, and then uh, uh, felt, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I always yeah. kept tabs, even when I kind of fell out of wrestling for a little bit. I was like, I, I always was wondering what Charlie Haas was up to and what Kurt Angle was up to. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, cool. no, Kurt, yeah, because Kurt went to Clarion, and we, you know, I went to Seton Hall, and we, you know, we 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 would wrestle Clarion there. You know, but yeah, no, I know Clarion very well. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's a pretty wild campus, small town, yeah. but it's like a lot of action going on, especially in wrestling. So, but let's talk about you and oh, uh, yeah. oh, you yeah. get, getting back in the mix. Yeah. Here. Um, it was I I cover Impact for WrestleZone as well, but I was sure to keep my eyes off of the spoilers because I didn't want to see. So it was a pleasant surprise to see you walk out there and everything like that. Um, talk about how that kind of came about for you with you and Impact. I, uh, um, you know, uh, I, I've been wrestling since, for like the last year in 2021 with uh, SWE. Um, which is uh, based out of Texas here, and uh, they, they're making they're making a lot of noise, um, making a big impact with the uh, pandemic and all that. You know, and in Texas, everything was basically open. You know, compared to a lot of other states, it's a Republican state, and, and Governor Abbott, you know, he had it open a lot, so a lot of people were coming in here to wrestle. So I think that helped a lot uh, get my name back out there. Um, and then uh, Tommy Dreamer saw me at an indie, um, you know, and he he's working at uh, he was working at Impact and uh, and D'Lo Brown. And he reached out to D'Lo and um, said, hey, look at Charlie now, you know, because Tommy's kind of taking a step back, I guess. And uh, so, but uh, yeah, they um, noticed they brought me in and um, I didn't know what was going to, who I was going to wrestle, what was going to happen. I know they're bringing me in, um, you know, so, and I, right off the bat, they had me with Josh Alexander. So, um, it, you know, um, it, I was excited, man. So I, I'm, I'm very thankful for them. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to see how the ma- match, you know, I, I did get a concussion in the match. Um, I was able to finish it, but I, I want to see what the match looks like. I don't know how the ending is and all that. Um, I, I felt the beginning, everything went off really good until uh, I, got, I got concussed. But, dude, Josh is the ultimate man. He is the ultimate professional, and so is uh, TNA. They were really great. So, uh, yeah, man, Tommy said it still looked really solid, so we'll see. He, I tell you what, like, yeah, to, to your point, Josh Alexander, he's been, like, just on this really unique tear for uh, Impact. He's wrestled, like, Minoru yeah. Suzuki, and now Jonah came in the mix, and now you. And it's, like, he's building such a resume, but it's also to awesome to see, like, somebody like you who's who had it honed his craft with amateur wrestling, but it then got into, the obviously, the pro wrestling and stuff. And hit those two styles that you guys have, I'm really excited to see how it pans out as well. So uh, how, how are you feeling after the concussion and everything? Everything good in that? Uh, yeah, yeah, everything feels good. It's been, it's been about two weeks, but no, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, and, uh, no, yeah, I mean, I got upcoming matches coming up. So, yeah, it was, it was mild. It wasn't really anything that serious, um, thank God. And um, now I'm ready to rock, man. I'm ready to rock. So. Yeah, and I thought it was cool too. You mentioned in in the announcement you just made today about the Haas of Pain tour, tour is yeah. um, that you were really motivated uh, for for different aspects. But uh, part of it was like your kids are into wrestling. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, what was yeah. a big? Mo- what was? Would you probably say is the biggest motivator for you to get back in the mix of things? Uh, I think it, it, it was uh, one, and I, man, I've always been a fan. But two, I mean, how and how um, how. I guess what looking at my boys and, and watching them, uh, how how much they're into it and how they know everything. It was kind of like how my brother and I were growing up, but you know, we didn't have the internet. I had wrestling magazines, and you know, and that's how I was able to keep up with all the different territories at the time. But Russ, man, he and Chuck, they are man. They just know, Dad, this is this guy, this is that guy, this is that promotion. Uh, you know, with the YouTube, and uh, so they never got a chance to see me wrestle for WWE or on TV at Ring of Honor. Um, they they weren't even born yet. Um, or I think Russ was born right when I started with Ring of Honor 2010. But, uh, you know, Chuck never did. So, 
here I, I'm coaching amateur wrestling and they, they wanted to try the pro wrestling. And uh, they, so they're like, well, come on, dad, let's go see some of these, uh, you know, SWE showing up here. Uh, Tech Summer Pro wanted to put me in their Hall of Fame. And so they got me back in the ring. So Robert Langdon had a lot to do with that. And uh, James Beard and then uh, SWE as well. So how about that? Uh, yeah, that's got to be kind of so back. Yeah. How, how does it feel like to for to get your kids to kind of watch you get in the mix with wrestling, but also see like just other stars and kind of see them almost like yeah. probably you and your brother did, you know, growing up in a lot of ways, like yeah. check out and enjoy wrestling. How has that been? Yeah. You know, you know, one of one of I'm getting a chance to work with uh, Kevin Sullivan and Eric Henry, which is, uh, you know, unbelievable. Um, two guys that I grew up watching, uh, Kevin Sullivan, you know, he's like probably the last link to Eddie Graham. Eddie Graham really took him under his wing and showed him how to book and how to write and how to develop talent. So I, I've been really picking his brain about that. Kevin Sullivan's really helped me out of that. Um, I'm a big fan of his um, and, and Eric Embry as well. Um, r- right now, um, man, my kids are just really, uh, you know, they, they wanted to get into pro wrestling and, that, and that's what they want to do. And I mean, I, I can't deny it because um, I mean, I, you know, me and my brother, we grew up in that, and how we found our way into it, you know, was by, it's like winning the lottery, but with them, you know, with my connections and, and since there's a lot of indies and all that, and, uh, you know, it's like, a, like I said, it's a great sh- time to be a wrestler and to be a wrestling fan with the uh, internet TV. Cause now you can see all these different, I guess I call them territories, all these different promotions, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, uh, and for what I mean by that is like MLW, NWA, uh, PCW ultra, um, you know, SWE, um, world-class now. So world-class SWE combined, um, with, uh, and then also you can like, you watch AAA, you watch Ring of Honor and of course, AEW and WWE. So you got all these different promotions and it's, uh, you know, fight TV has done a lot fight network. So it's, um, man, it's really good time to be both a wrestler and a fan. So. I know you even mentioned it in your tweet too, about like how wild it is to see like Effie and Jeff Jarrett and like, you yeah. know, like those kind of names like that, that are in the oh, GCW, of course. Yes. Yeah, yes, GCW yes, yes too right. And everything. And like to see, to see that kind of happen in the, like, I mean, yeah. it's been overused at this point, but the forbidden door term is like all over the place. So it's like right. quite the, quite the neat opportunities. And I know you didn't have a, you were like, I don't have a dream list, but this, I just want to get back in the mix kind of thing. Um, from yeah. a promotion standpoint, what has been, I mean, I think for you too, is somebody, you're somebody that's very adaptable. Like you've shown that in WWE and you're showing, you're able to show different styles and different personas almost in a way to, you know, to showcase yourself. Is there a certain promotion yeah. that you think really stands out that you're like, Oh man, I like what they're doing or how they're handling going about their business currently. Man. Um, you know, like, like I said, here's what, here's what I, I I'm a fan of all pro all wrestling. And I like all the promotions that are, that are being, that have promoted themselves with internet TV. Um, I do. And I watch them all. Um, and the reason why is like I, when I grew up, wrestling i was it was right at the end of the territory so i grew when i grew up as a fan of wrestling as a kid so i was able to watch you know i get up at 905 in the morning at wtbs and watch georgia championship wrestling and then then i had um wwf would come on 11 then mid-south would come on at noon and then i would you know from 605 to 805 was gordon Sully was it was the nwa carolinas or basically you know world-class wrestling or world championship wrestling back then. and then uh and then I'd watch from, so that was 6 to 5, 8 to 5. And then at midnight was the uh, Sportatorium, Dallas, Texas, you know. So, uh, and at times I'd get glimpses of USWA or AWA would be like on a Thursday afternoon or after school or something or a Wednesday after school. But, I mean, I, I had the opportunity to watch all that. So now when I go to, Plu, uh, when I go to um, Pluto TV, you know, and I click on, you know, fight. I mean, you got MLW, you got, you got, um, like I said, you got MLW, you got AAA, you got Ring of Honor will be on there, you got NWA, you got Impact, you got, I mean, you got so many different um, promotions, you know, and then AEW, WWE, of course. So I try to watch all of it. So I'm a fan of all of it. On uh, GCW, I've been watching uh, GCW on their pay per views lately. And um, so, you know, I, I know they don't have uh, content yet on, t- on internet TV, but they do have it on the pay per views and uh, YouTube TV. So and YouTube TV's helped out a lot. So, man, I, I'm a big fan. Um, so, I mean, GCW is killing it right now. I'd love like to work with them. MLW, I'd like to work with them. Impact, I mean, I hope they bring me back. I hope that, you know, it, it turns out good tomorrow, even though the circumstance. Um, and uh, I, I, I really i am looking forward to that. I, would, I mean, I would love to get work back with them. I'd love to work with AEW, um, you know. And, uh, and, and, and right now I'm working with SW and World Class and uh, Tech Solo Pro. But, uh, you know, and I just signed a six um, – 
a six uh, uh, date deal, uh, so six six match deal with um, Prestige. So oh. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, and that is that's going to be fun. I'm, um, that's going to start up here uh, in the end of February, and we got March, and then um, I want to say April too. Uh, I got six matches with them, so I'm excited, man. I really I hope it turns out to be more. Um, and if I have those dates wrong, it's because I, I got so much going on. But uh, but yeah, Prestige has really been grateful, and uh, you know I know there's some great guys on that card, so I'm looking forward to that as well. So. I know. I think didn't I just see? I think Malachi Black is one of the announced names too now on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would, dude. I would. I would love to work him out. You know, like at my list, Malachi, Jonah. You know, uh, T.J. Perkins. Um, you know, I'd love to have another match with Tanahashi. You know, since uh, you know, you. I mean, IWGP is back in you know in the United States right now. You know, right. so um, you know, Rocky Romero, any of those guys. So um, Davey Richards. I um, yeah. You know, Brian. <laughs> Yeah, no, Brian Danielson. I mean, him and I, we know we broke bread together. We started together. Uh, so I, I would love to really have, I would love to have the opportunity to work, to work all those guys. Uh, the list could go on and on, you know. I'd love to, I would really like to come back in and work with Arn Anderson and his son. I'd like to work with Brock, you know, so. I would love that. Yeah, that would be great. I think, and just seeing, like, we've only gotten little short glimpses of Brock so far, but, like, you can tell, like, the foundation is there, you know, obviously. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. you can tell just by, like, just visually and how he kind of worked in the ring a little bit. Even against Malachi for that brief uh, match, too, was really good. So right. that would right. be great. Yeah, it's funny you yeah. said those two names because I had a short list of who I was going to say for you. And one was Danielson. The other one was Richards. And then uh, yeah. the other one I wanted to add, too, is Jonathan Gresham, too. I think that would be a great Yeah, one. no, oh, that'd be a, I'd love to work Jonathan Gresham, too. I mean, you know what? And, I, and I'd like to even go back, you know, and – uh now, I would love to work a, a match with a. I haven't worked uh, with Dustin in a long time. Dustin Rhodes. I mean, I, I think he's kind of like stepped back. Uh, Cody's really excelled. I worked with him a couple of times. So I'd like to work with him. If I could get a good tag team partner, or Shelton would come out. We'd like to work the Young Bucks as well. Or, or uh, you know, um, what do you call the um, the, the revival? You know, uh, yes, fuck the FTR. revival. You know, FTR. Yeah, yeah, FTR. Yeah. They're, I'd love to work always, them as well. Heck, the Briscoes. I'd love to see you mix it up with the Briscoes too. Yeah, you know, well, you know, that's the thing is, I my brother and I broke in the Briscoes. Uh, we broke them in, and there's a match on YouTube. If you go back, you'll see where it, we started a riot in their high school. Like we handcuffed them, the dad to the post. We Russ and I did a move to the mom. The Briscoes were knocked out. The family jumped. They didn't even know that was going on. So yeah, the Briscoes and the Haas brothers go back a long way, man. I think we were their first match ever. And um, so, and then Shelton and I, of course, have had matches with them. So um, yeah, I would love to have, I mean, I would love to get a hold of them too. And, um, you know, put them on my podcast just to talk to them about, you know, Russ, Russ and I, so. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, there's some, I, yeah, there's so many cool opportunities for like uh, wrestlers, like legacy wrestlers like yourself or like modern wrestlers today and get those all in the mix. And like, I think now is the opportunity for promotions to make the most of that too, because it's just, right. the, the, it's just so much for that, that kind of opportunity. Um, did you get to check out Terminus at all? That seems like something that's right up your alley too, that uh, with the Gresham's promotion with uh, Baron Black. No, you know what? I would, uh, you know, I've not checked out Terminus yet. Um, no, I've not. Thank you for putting that on my list. I'll, yeah. I'll start to check them out, though. Yeah, I mean, I would like I said, I'd like to work Jonathan Gresham, but yeah, it would be great to work uh, Terminus. Oh, I think you'd really like that. I didn't get to check out the pay per view yet, but it's uh, from what they did, they they like certainly cultivated and like curated their their talent there, and I think you'd be a real good yeah. to get again. Yeah, that, 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 I'll have to look. You know, I'll have to. Yeah, if you have any connections on how to talk to them, I'll, yeah, send them to me. So absolutely. That, that in, uh, yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. Um, some, something I wanted to ask you too. Um, j this kind of goes back to the ruthless aggression era and stuff like that with you and Team Angle. Um, there was so much amateur wrestling, such a solid amateur wrestling background back then. Um, I always thought it would kind of be wild. Uh, would it? Did you guys kind of have like a competitive vibe against one another from an amateur wrestling standpoint background? Like, you, like wanting to mix it up. I almost thought like what would be neat to see with almost like a brawl for all for amateur wrestling. Would you think something like that could have got executed at some point or anything like that in a way? Or, um, I, I think it could have, um, you know, I think, uh, with, uh, with our work ethic and, uh, that you develop in amateur wrestling. Um, and, you know, I think if, uh, like you said, if it was, uh, cultivated correctly or uh, curated, I think, I think it could have something like that could really excel. Um, it just, it depends on, who the promoter is and how they do it and who the workers are, you know, you know, the thing with amateur wrestling, you know, you got to teach, you know, you got to teach. And, there, and there's a lot of them getting signed right now at WWE that, you know, um, you know, we, we go in and it's just like with an amateur wrestler, we got to teach We got to, we got to learn how to slow down. 
we also got to learn, uh, you know, you know, not to be so, st- um, what do you call it? So snug and so stiff, you know, we got to really, you know, boom, we got to initiate the hold, but then we got to really, you know, be able to work it. And we got to let the other guy work too. Um, I kind of like it though, if it, you know, make it work from underneath and uh, I feel like they're working from underneath. And if you feel they are, then, you know, I, my whole motto is if I don't feel it, I'm not going to sell it, you know? And then that's the way, cause you know, you got it. You, you, your work can't be see-through. It's got to be a hundred percent. Uh, the holds, even when you execute the holds and the counters and the counters to the counters, like you really got to know your craft, you know, you know, and I, I think the way what would help Shelton and I and Kurt is being able to mix our amateur style with a Dave Finley or a Steven Regal or a David Taylor type of style. Yeah. And that helped a lot. And then with Arn Anderson's, uh, his, uh, the old, uh, Anderson cliche, you know, you, you hinder that limb useless and you beat him with it. Like, I think that, that really helped us, out. and that was a, what really helped adapt. To, you know, made us adaptable to pro wrestling, and it was just all those three styles, and I think it worked together: amateur wrestling, the European style, and then the you know the Anderson style. So yeah, there's, I mean, like, and you're you're picking from all those like different backgrounds, and like, yeah, that's like the perfect amalgamation of like building a good basis, I think, for a pro wrestler. <laughs> from yeah, no, it is, it's a hundred percent, you know, hundred percent, and then that will help you carry on over to Japan for a strong style or even lucha. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, something else, uh, somebody that's notorious with amateur wrestling in Oklahoma is Danny Hodge. Did you ever get to meet him or interact with him before? Yeah, I, I met him a, a bunch of times. And, uh, you know, he's from Perry, Oklahoma. Um, you know, Jake Hager is from there. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we had a, you know, Jack Swagger. But, uh, no, he's a great guy, man. Um, yeah, I was able to really meet him. I was able to talk to him. Um, yeah, I mean, his grip is really that strong and he can really do all those tricks, like breaking on a pair of pliers with his hand, crushing an apple. Um, you know, he, he's a, he was, uh, I mean, you know, he was a three-time national champion, went undefeated in amateur boxing and, uh, you know, and I mean, even his pro book career was really good. You know, you can watch that stuff on YouTube as well. Yeah. I mean, like, I think he kind of flies under the radar a lot nowadays and stuff like that. And he's I, the influence that he had and just like this, just being a pure badass like that is something you don't get to see too often, yeah. anymore, you know, he, he was probably he was probably one of the first, um, you know, probably a, a UFC type of, um, you know, mix there. You know, I mean, he may have been the first, you know, MMA, you know, professional, really, um, because of amateur, you know, he was undefeated three time national champ. You know, he was great there. Um, and then, um, when it came to pro wrestling, he was, a, he was a pro- total ultimate professional and then his boxing career, amateur and pro. So, I mean, he is one of those guys that you just, uh, you know, it's just, we don't have enough film on him to, to, to see how good he really was. Right. But he has a lot to do with the Briscoe brothers. I'll tell you that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, something I wanted to ask you too, um, just being away it like from wrestling for the, like this hiatus and stuff like that. What was yeah. some other stuff that kept your interest going, not with wrestling, but just outside of stuff. I know you're with your kids and everything like that, but yeah. what, what was some other uh, things that you kind of uh, developed over the course of it? Uh, I, I was coaching am- amateur wrestling, uh, really working with that, um, building an amateur program here in Dallas, uh, that, you know, around my kids, Russ and Chuck, that are exceptionally well in amateur wrestling, um, you know, helping develop North Texas is like amateur wrestling. Um, they, they go into a high school called Allen high school and it's, um, they're one of the, they have a great football team, but they're also like a top 10, top 20 wrestling program every year. Um, they're going for their 13th straight title and they produce the greats like uh, Bo nickel, who was a three-time national champ at Penn state. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, AJ Ferrari, who just signed an NIL contract with WWE. Um, he also came from Allen as well. So, um, yeah. So I was, you know, I was able to, uh, you know, to, to help with it, with them as well. But, um, you know, it's just, but it's really working with the youth program and really trying to develop talent. So, you know, that they have opportunities if they want to continue wrestling. I, I think amateur wrestling makes you a better athlete in all sports. So, but I, I really feel, you know, it's, it gives them an opportunity to try to get a scholarship to get their education paid for. So hundred hundred percent also like from, I think yeah, it's such a disciplinary sport, like, like from a, like, you just have to have a certain good mindset and have a good amount of fortitude. What do you think is the biggest aspect you take away from amateur wrestling? Uh, like, from well, life, that's a, life lesson thing. Yeah. That's a great uh, question. Uh, so I, amateur wrestling makes you, it puts you in uncomfortable positions and you have to learn how to get out of those positions. It's the old, like, yeah, I know you're holding, and you know, the counter, and then the, the counter to the counter, you know, that's the way we teach and break down the technique. Um, I have a motto that says little things make a big difference. Do not over, you know, make sure you turn every stone over and make sure you, you don't look for a shortcut. So 
Um, if you, once you learn how to get out of those uncomfortable positions, you know, that amateur wrestling puts you in, you can apply that to life and you can uh, put that towards like divorce, death, taxes, um, you know, whatever obstacles God throws in your way or whatever, you know, obstacles come your way. Um, it'll teach you how to, you know, to overcome those and how to, you know, to get out of that uncomfortable position, you know, just relying, you know, because that's what amateur wrestling is. You're the only one on the mat. You don't have other teammates to, you know, they can blame stuff on or to look to it's, it's you, you got to put the work in, in order to be successful. Oh, that's great. No, that's a really good like analogy too for life in general is because yeah, you'll find yourself in tough positions in life yeah. a- across the board and it doesn't necessarily have to be a wrestling hold, but yeah, it's like, no, that's, that's awesome. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. Something on it too, like kind of in relation to hobbies a lot. Uh, you know, everybody, you're so synonymous with Shelton and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is something that you guys kind of shared or bonded over that wasn't related to wrestling whatsoever? There's something, there's an aspect that you guys kind of shared in, like that you guys both kind of enjoyed. Yeah, man. We uh, well, we like movies. Um, uh, we're definitely uh, you know, the uh, he's uh, he's a hell of a like. I'm not a very good video game guy, so I'm, I'm terrible at that. Me too. But, um, I, but I, you know, he kind of got me hooked with the the comics and the Marvel, so I'm always calling him. My kids are always calling him and asking him, you know, hey, you know, because he's a really when it comes to um, man, uh, to the comics, man, he's a, a connoisseur, man. He knows everything. He's a, so uh, so he actually, you know, I'm always asking him about the Marvel stuff or DC and um, did. And that's about, you know, and, and, and working out just, you know, different types of workouts, lifting and all that, that, you know. But basically, man, I, you know, um, that's I mean, it's just, you know. It's almost like, you know, after Rust, I became my brother. So it's like, even if it's like advice with, with uh, life or now that I'm single again, it's advice like dating, you know, and all that. So, you know, I, for 15 years, I was off the market and, you know, now I come back and it's all these apps and I'm like, you know, right. I'm asking, Should I do this? yeah. So I'm like, you know, so a lot of it, it's, 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 it's it has a lot to do with that as well. So, but no, he's, uh, you know, you just, uh, you know, he's like, he's in Houston, he's four or five hours away. So, oh, that, okay. That's not, I didn't know that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So yeah, how about that? No, you're right though. Jeez, the dating landscape nowadays, it's crazy. It's so man. I know, man. It's, I'm like, whoa, it's really it is crazy. It's overwhelming. So, it's overwhelming. I know. Um, let's see. Uh yeah, just uh what I else wanted to see about just overall, what I, I think you were asked this on a previous podcast, but uh, let like just your overall goals for 2022. Uh, yeah, you know, I would, I, my, my goals are, it's like, I, I feel like I have like a good two or three years left on the tank. Um, I want, I want, I want to get, um, I, I want to get my name back out there. I want to these, um, the, I want, I want the companies to know that, man, I, you know, I'll come in, I want to help develop younger talent. And what I mean by develop them is like work with them in the ring, you know, run some good programs, but also work behind the scenes. You know, my, my goal, my main goal is, you know, Russ and Chuck are 11 and nine. I, I got them doing professional wrestling as well, but you know, I'm starting to run, I got my youth program and I got a lot of kids that are showing interest in pro wrestling, especially now with WWE signing all these amateur wrestlers out of college or during college, you know? Um, so what I'm trying to do is, uh, you know, start a junior wrestling Alliance and, and see in in the way I will I will teach it is uh, the kids are don't wrestle out of the ring, um, they stay in the ring, do nothing off the top rope, no power bombs or no uh, spine busters, anything with a whiplash right now because you know they're so young, they're they're developing and their brains are so, so try to avoid the, the concussions. Everything will be head, you know, body slams, hip tosses, you know, anything feet first um, landing. Um, when you're landing flat, but he always takes the impact. So what I'm trying to do is, uh, I can, if I can teach, you know, I'm teaching Russ and Chuck, they're already doing pro matches, which if you ever go to YouTube, um, I, I mean, it's unbelievable. These kids are so gifted and I'm like, they're so more athletic than I ever could be. And I'm like, man, and it, it, they got like that Randy Orton, like the timing perfect. And, um, and they're doing actual matches. So if I could teach kids, you know, from like 10 to 15, 16, you know, good 10 years, you know, you got a whole nother future of wrestlers that are going to be ex- exceptional. But, um, you know, what I want to do is I want to work with, you know, youth. I want to uh, promote pro wrestling, you know, the youth. Uh, and, and I want, you know, because another thing is uh, a side note on that is like when you wake up in the morning and say, hey, I'm going to be a professional professional football player or a basketball player. Just don't go try out. I mean, it yeah. takes years of talent. So mm-hmm. why not? Why does anyone start a youth program or uh, anything for the kids, you know, and to teach them how to work in front of a camera, teach them timing, teach them psychology. I mean, it's so hard. Like when you're 18, you know, in some states, like you gotta be 18 to wrestle, you know, the commission. And then I'm like, all right. Then they're like, well, you're primed by the time you're 23, 24. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's so difficult to learn all that. 
And it's very, accept, you know, very few people can do it. It takes them years and years and years. So why not start a kid young at a young age? And that's their goal. And they want to be a pro, a pro wrestling fan. You know, I think a lot of kids quit being wrestling fans because there's no way for them to go into it until they're older. And by that time, they're already playing different sports. So, you know, maybe it, it, there's something there. Maybe there's a niche that could, you know, it could help out. Um, and also, I want to get in back into tech. I want to um, I'll eventually go from wrestling back into a, becoming an agent, a producer, or a coach. Mm -hmm. I like to work with a, you know, AEW or WWE or, uh, you know, MLW or, you know, uh, Impact. You know, I've, I've, I've asked them maybe to come back in. Um, I think tag team wrestling is lost right now. Um, I think that it's it could be it can be go back to being at a main event status where it should be. Um, it's it's a different style of wrestling. The psychology is different. But I've been trained by the best: Arn Anderson, Jerry Briscoe. Uh, we worked with a lot of great tag teams, and with Shelton and I. And um, you know, I was a tag team guy all with, with before that with my brother. So um, I really would like to work and help develop tag team wrestling. And the problem with tag team wrestling: the heels don't know how to be heels. The heels want to be. They want to be prettier than the, than the baby faces. They want their moves to look better. You know, it's just, it's, it, it, they just need the right psychology or someone to coach them. So. Absolutely. You look at like FTR, they're like, they're not afraid to play the ass or show ass or like play, play the no. beg off or nothing like that. And like, you want to see a lot of that feels and everything or like play the chicken shit a yeah. little bit, you know, and there's uh, certainly yeah. a balance of that happening. You need that. You need in the mix. Well, you know, and everyone, they're, 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 they want to come with all these creative double team moves. And I'm like, Man, I, I my my top tag team in the, in the wrestling. I've always grew up watching, and my and because I was honored to work with them too. But was Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard? I think they're the best tag team ever, the best shield tag team. And I can you, you can't name one double tag team move they did. No, you no, you can't. really can't. Uh, uh, you can't. No, but they were that good because they made the other guys look good, and they knew how to make them work from underneath. And then you can't, you, I, I can't name one tag team move that they can do the double team move, maybe one finish every now and then. But dude, they, they were the the pinnacle, you know. And that's what that's what's missing is that type of style. That's a great point. I think about it too. It's like when I was, you know, growing up watching you guys, or during the Attitude Era, even like. <laughs> Tag teams, you'd only have one big finish, like one big double team was it. And then yeah. that, that's all she wrote, you know, and, uh, you know, the, the rest of that stuff you laid out and told a story. So, no, that's a really great point because you do see a lot of double yeah. teams that are unique, but it's like they lose a little bit of their pizzazz if it's happening uh, all the time, you know. So, you know and, and, they bury, and they bury the refs like, you know, you got five seconds to get in and out. You can you can accomplish your message and story within that five seconds, you don't have to, all right, shoot reverse up and over. Uh, I'm going to, okay, go for a body slam. You do a backflip and land on him. I mean, it's, it's, you don't need that as a heel man, just so I can shoot him off and close on him, you know, shoot him off to pull the ref, knee him in the back. You know, it's, a, it's just some basic stuff that people don't do, you know? So as you know, a, it's, um, if you're coming from an agent standpoint or, or helping or coaching backstage, what do you think you personally excel at? Like what, what in regards to, yeah, telling a talent or, you know, somebody, a prospective talent, what, what they would be good at. What, what do you think you really excel at? It? Like, it, so, so, you know, uh, what would help me taking the time off is learning how to coach amateur wrestling with the little kids, you know, wrestling, amateur wrestling is one thing. Coaching is a totally different thing, but learning how to break it down so I can teach footwork. I could teach off how to cut the ring off as a tag team. I could teach them, you know, how to work the crowd, how to slow down. And it's not so much move the moves, it's the work between the moves. And that's what's missing. And, you know, and if you just do that, you don't have to worry about getting all your stuff in. And it's not about getting your stuff in. You can interact with the crowd and the cr you can pull the crowd in. And, you know, that's something I learned later on in my career. And it's, and it's really worked out, especially me being a heel. Like, it's just like, you don't give the fans what they want as a heel, you know? Um, you know, my, I'm one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. That's why I say, but yet when I'm in the ring, am I wrestling? No, man, I'm, I'm not giving them what they want. They're like, yeah, it's bullshit. You know, it's, it's just like, it's that psychology. Um, and, you know, but when I have to go, I have to go. I mean, I can, I can wrestle. Um, but it's, um, you know, I, I, I can help them, you know, with, you know, I, I mean, I was fortunate to have great guys to work with, but a lot of great coaches at the time. And what I mean, like producers or agents, like a Steve Kern, um, a Jimmy Cornette, uh, who was a great manager of everything. Danny Davis, Arn Anderson, Jerry Briscoe, Ricky Steamboat was there. Um, you know, Fit Finley, David Taylor, um, you know, and um, um, Stephen Regal. I mean, it was just all these guys that I had the chance, you know, even like a Chris Canyon when he was going through WCW, a Tommy Dreamer. So you, you learn all from these guys and what their styles were. And so, you know, and all those guys grew up in, that I mentioned worked in the territories and they had different styles, but I was able to absorb and ask them and, and what, you know, like Steve Kern, he goes, Charlie, the best way to make a facial, don't try to sit there and make your face. He goes, that looks terrible. He goes, 
Let your eyes tell the story. The face will turn. Well, the face will form around the, the story of the eyes, which it makes sense. You know, I never, you know, you know, so stuff like that. And, you know, and then just, you know, with what Arne Anderson has always taught me, you know, the good family. So I think that, um, that right there, I have a lot to offer there. I can tell them, Hey, Hey, we can slow down here, use this hold. Hey, I can tell, I can teach them how to work. No one works body parts anymore. And Shelton and I have mastered the style with the amateur and the, in the, um, and the uh, European, how we could work different body parts. So I can show them how to work different holds, body parts, you know, and how to do it dirty, how to do it. It's a like baby face, physical, um, you know, and how to make you know, apply the holds and make it look real, how to make your work not look, you know, see-through. Because, I mean, here, here's another thing. Mm-hmm. I tell everyone, listen to the little kids, man. My, my kids, I, you know, I have, my kids are from 9 to 15, two girls, two boys. And we'll be riding home in the car. I'm like, hey, what you guys think of the show? And my nine year old's like, hey, is wrestling fake or real, dad? And I'm like, it's real. Why? And he goes, because my punches look better than half the guys on the show. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, and that's who you got to listen to, man. It's mm-hmm. those kids. Because if they don't believe, their parents aren't going to believe. I'll tell you that right now. So, yeah, 100%. So, yeah. <laughs> that's great. So, well, it's true, 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'll, I'll let you go with this. Um, as far as uh, certain matches and stuff like that, is, is there any ones that have stood out to you that you've watched recently that, that, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, you know, um, I'll tell you what, Brian Danielson's matches have been really off the chart, you know, um, uh, you know, um, like you said, uh, Josh Alexander, you know, uh, you know, Jonah is there, uh, Jonah's just, I love watching Jonah, man. That guy is just a beast, man. Um, he's just, he's unbelievable, man. He just like, it's everything's just like, man, you feel it. I think Jacob fought too, um, the Simone werewolf. He yeah. is, he is a hell of a performer. Um, so is, um, um, so is Mantel, uh, not Mantel. I'm sorry, um, Moonshine. Yeah, Moonshine. Moonshine. No, I was going to ask you about yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of his. Me too. Uh, huge fan of his. Uh, big fan of Jack Stain. You know, uh, Rodney Rodney Mack is doing a lot of good. He's helping build a lot of guys down there in San Antonio. Uh, they got a lot of upcoming talent. But um, it, I just uh, you know that Malachi Black. I mean, his work is just not see through. It just looks so solid, man. And Dude, he, he is just he, I, I love I love that little st- stunt he did with Arn, you know, when he threw a kick, Arn blocked it, and then he caught cut. I'm just just that stuff that Arn could teach you where he blocked it, pulled up his pants, like let's go, and then he took a kick. I mean, just that told a story. I'm like, dude, that you know, it's just it's unbelievable. Simplicity, so. it's simplicity, but it's direct, you know what I mean? Where it's just right. like, yeah. yeah, it's just boom, it hits it's in. Like as a fan, like you know, you watching that, you want to see fight and violence. Boom, you get it right there. And like it's a story yeah. too, just in that, yeah, little window. Yeah, it is. It sure is. Absolutely. So, hey, okay. Yeah. Let's get you out of here. What um right. anything you want to plug? Um and yeah, man, yeah. So like I got my I got my first shirt, uh pro wrestling t-shirt, Charlie Haas is not dead shirt because someone said that I, I it was fatally killed in the uh, impact ring. So that's not true. I'm still here. Yeah. Um also want to thank Impact for allowing me to you know to to debut me and show me case me back for 2022. Um and uh wrestling's greatest podcast, uh the Haas Pod, and um, you know, you at Real Charlie Haas uh, uh Facebook page. And like I said, the wrestling's uh, greatest podcast, the Facebook page as well. And I'm at, at Charlie Haas on Twitter. So awesome. that's awesome. it, man. Charlie, I'm and so uh, Haas of Pain Tour, man. Yeah, and booking Charlie Haas at Gmail. If you got it, you know. Like, yeah. Well, I'll be sure to include that all in our article too when we, when okay. we get it all posted. All right. but I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Thank man. I, so much. Yeah, guys, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at WrestleZone.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Dominic D'Angelo. And go to WrestleZone.com for our wrestling news needs. So, all right, guys, yeah. see you later.